how do you sum up a man's life in such a short period of time? In five minutes. I'm so grateful for all of you for being here on a beautiful day, beautiful Saturday, sun is shining. I wish we would have together on better terms. But when I asked David, I'm like, is there anything you request in your in your final service, in your funeral, any sort of surprise or my name is Dr. Rose Trevino. Now, before you get too excited, I'm a PhD doctor, so I can only talk to you because the ambulance gets there. Now, Dr. Cornell West, he says about philosophy is what we do, which people don't understand, is you, you learn to use your mind to think. So we think for a little bit. And what is, what is the hardest question in life that some of us don't like to think about? But that philosophers and trying to get our rhythm look at it. And that's life. This question of life. It's Carl Stanberg, not my better teacher used to say, Carl Stanberg had this remembrance line. Wherever you go, you get up on top and you will say, Who am I? Where did I come from? What is the purpose and how do I fit? I like it. This question of like time, you know, Einstein said time is, is relative, it depends. And David, and he was someone that I was so close to. We shared such a bond. I have never been as close to anybody as David. We were so close to the born on a birthday. I was the oldest to. Uh, the king, the, the lion king, and he came uh, three years later when I was three years old. And David, someone told me, and I saw a little card that goes, and it described the best as when he walked into a room, he lit up the room. You know, as you get older and time passes, you realize that there's some people in this world that have a spark, have that, that certain thing you can't really put on them. And that was my brother. He had a spark. And my brother and Dr. Stegel from my, my instructor from Kennesaw State, when we first she first met my brother, she pointed out something and she was a psychologist that I have always kept in mind is that when you call someone your brother and not their name, it means you have a closer bond. So my brother and I were so close. But he was always in such a hurry. When he first came, I really was not glad that he came because I was the king and all of a sudden he took my, my, my spotlight off. And I was so mad that my mother said that I went in and bit his finger. And she walked in and my brother was, you know, please say, what the heck's going on? And I was angry. I'm like, why are you bringing here? And to the end, he had no scar and he would show people and show his finger. I was, you know, the mama's boy, I was the first of the first born, I wanted all the attention. But David, you know, he, he was a cracker jack. He, at six months, was walking. At 10 months, he was already talking. Me, I was still, ah, ah, ah. my mother thought something was wrong with me. He was like, no, I'm gonna stop my baby. David, I think the best word that I'm thinking of something that captures him a lesson we can take from his life is love. What is love? What is love? We many times, I sometimes think, we think about romantic love, and we think about hearts, and we think about kisses, and we think about all these things that we think of love. But love is deeper. Love is really putting someone else ahead of you. Because all of us are the center of our story. All of us are the hero of our story. And when you're able to get beyond that and think about someone else, that is love. And my brother embodied love. He just embodied, embodied love. He was a young man in a hurry, but he loved life. He loved to have a good time. And my brother and I were gallery around town with all this craziness. And I remember one time I walked into a room and I overheard these people there. Who are those guys? And this other lady said, 
Oh, there's a Greek road, very technology. The Torino road. <laughs> So we would go on the job and say, hey, we're Greek, Greek brothers in technology. But he enjoyed life. He would go out, celebrate the road, we did the play and show, whatever we love, the arts, and I see so many kids in here from the art community, that we would get home late, we'd sleep a few hours, and my dad had a shop, transmission shop. He would get up, he would rebuild these transmissions, he would go home, change clothes, and go to court and do his legal aspect. My brother had a confidence like no one else that I knew, but a humbleness. And today our other brothers are wearing, he was he's the black sheep family. He went to middle school in Colonel Battle, Georgia Tech. My brother was so sure that he was going to get into Georgia Tech, he only applied to one school. One school. No backup. No, he knew he was going to get into tech. He got his uh, undergraduate there. He got his Master's there. I talked to one of his professors, Dr. Allen, and Randy Winjo, and told me to report to you that he was the best student of nine years of his life that he had. Because David was not only a man of the earth, but he was a man that was reflective and a man of ideas. This week, he read three books. Later in life, he decided, after I got my terminal degree, that he he liked helping people out. And what's the best way to do that? Through the law. And he went back and got the mercy. Picked up. Just one day I went to law school. That was it. No discussion. Uh, picked up. Moved down to Bear Country, down to Macon. And knocked it out. He always had this caring for other people. We share an office space. Well, not a time. Don't understand each other. Didn't understand my brother, why he wanted to be to. And I told him, I'm like, don't get tired of every day people come in with this problems. Divorce, murder, tickets, the, everything you can imagine. And I'm like, doesn't it bother you with these problems that you're going to get And he says, no, because they're not my problems. My job is to help solve. The only thing you can't solve is that. So he could solve problems. And he was a, a solution guy. He had a mind that was incredible. He could fix anything. Give him a piece of gun and one of the wires, and he could solve and he could help. David also saw the beauty of the world. He loved life, he loved the beauty of the world. Uh, Bill Clinton told a story that the one lesson, actually, what's the most important lesson that you have learned in your life? And he said, when he was eighth grade, he was taking a chemistry class. This old curmudgeon guy doesn't even remember what he learned in that chemistry class. But the guy used to say that, you won't remember me when you get old, you won't remember what we talked today, but he says that you need to do is every day you get up, you look in the mirror and you say, I am beautiful. I am love. And I am special. And he saw the beauty in that. I looked across the room and he just knew so many people from a cross reference of life. The last thing in love, which I think is the most important, is faith. When he was born, he was born in the city of Orange, in beautiful, sunny California. There, uh, Christmas Cathedral, which now is a Catholic church, uh, across the street there's a hospital. And my mother remembers vividly when she had David, would look out the window, and there at the Christmas Cathedral, they had this tower, and it was called the Tower of Hope. Of hope. So he just carried that hopefulness, that faith. We've been fortunate. We've had faith throughout our entire life. This church is more than just a church to me. It's home. I have so many memories of us here. My brother David was everything you can imagine. Altar service. Uh, he was, there used to be a father. Father Stuhl, who was very, very tall. And my brother was a very, very short guy. And he was so short that he would hold the book and lay it on his head. And then the father would turn the pattern, turn the pages. But all those sacraments that we had here in this beautiful, beautiful church, our faith will help us get through this. Because it takes a lot of responsibility 
and that there are things that we just cannot understand. He's going to take care of it. David is now celebrating, fixing problems, looking at people, trying to figure out how this and that works. Our faith teaches us just basic tenets. Love our neighbor like ourselves, forgive people, and love. Just love. There was Woody Allen in the movie. There was a line that I loved. It says, you know, you've got to live like uh, like today and relax. Because one day it's going to be Woody. David, he went quick. He passed away Thursday morning. Here we are celebrating, celebrating this transition. Now I'd like to slam it to you, visitor. If today were your next day, what would you do differently? Who would you forgive? Who would you reach out and say, I love you? Who would you show your compassion? One of the beauties last night at the wake was, it's been, I can't remember how long, when I was able to touch you, hug, listen, hear these stories, these things, David, who was someone that was a man in the earth, he loved life, he saw the beauty of it, and he had faith. So today I want to celebrate because God has a new angel. God has a new angel. And no matter what you're going through, and everyone has issues, they have problems, and they have things that they're concerned about, it's going to work out. Just have faith. See the beauty. Celebrate life. So to my brother, my best friend, someone that I will never ever be able to replace, rest in peace and I'll see you soon.